Hey everybody, this is Eric, your host from Picks and Bones. Wanted to go ahead and give a happy new year to everybody once again. And uh wanted to go ahead and let everybody know we have a Patreon that has gone live. And uh you have the opportunity. It would be greatly appreciated for you to help, you know, every any little bit you can, just like you would these awesome musicians that I bring on to uh introduce you guys to. This actually helps keep this show going, making it better every week and making it stronger as we go and i can't there's so many different levels there's some pretty great swag on a few levels there and uh and hey if you're a potential sponsor listening hey reach out i'm always looking for new sponsors for the show and i promise you we will get you out there to the world and that being said this week got somebody special with you we uh featuring pablo trajillo from mickey and the motor cars we had a blast doing this interview, and I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did. Welcome, everybody, to Picks and Bones. I'm your host, Eric. Today, we are sitting down with somebody that I think is one of the best musicians out there today. You know, he plays with a little band called uh, Mickey and the Motor Cars. Guys, let me introduce you to Pablo Trio. How you How's doing, buddy? Going? Man, it's doing, doing great. Well. That's awesome. <laughs> I know it's been a, it's a busy season for everybody wrapping up the year and uh, everything kind of, how's it been for you? It's good. Um, I'm in Boise right now. We're here for our new year's show. We're doing down at the knitting factory tomorrow night. Uh, we've got a couple of days off. Uh, we're just here hanging out. I went and had breakfast with some of the band guys and just kind of relaxing before we wrap up the year. <laughs> and hey, you, you guys have had a fairly busy year, haven't you? We have, um, we've man, been a little bit of everywhere. We released a new album a couple months ago and we've been pushing that, you know, in and around Texas and we did a West coast tour kind of doing the same thing, pressing that, um, it's called long time coming. So if you guys want to check that out, it's on all the streaming services. Love to, love to get some folks listening to it. But I was, I was making people been, listen yeah. last night <laughs> oh, awesome. as a matter of fact. <laughs> So uh, you are, tell them what you do in the band. Um, well, my first job is lead guitar. Um, and I actually, I joined the motor cars in 18. So a little more than a year ago, uh, back in October. And, um, you know, I started off just playing lead guitar and eventually incorporated. I also play steel guitar. So got that incorporated in the band. And just recently I started playing mandolin on a couple of songs as oh, well. Wow. So, so we're... We're a few hats on stage. And <laughs> yeah, you're a man of great many talents. <laughs> I do my best, that's for sure. <laughs> now, do you uh, do you contribute to any of the songwriting or anything? Um, I haven't. I you know when I came in, a lot of what was going on was already done. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it was more of you know learn the parts and then kind of put my spin on it, and um, that's been the coolest thing. You know, it's because when I was first, you know introduced to the music of the band and joined the band you know of course i wanted to keep true to the sound of the motor cars which has you know been something that i've listened to for a really long time and i have a, a jazz funk and mariachi background nice. so but, uh, <laughs> i and i did that for several years and you know i played with a country band for several years a uh, cover band and you know it's, it's been kind of cool to you know follow the reins of dustin and dustin schaefer and chris farrow and you know without even sitting down with them too much. I learned so much from those guys, but yeah, it's been cool. <laughs> That's awesome. How does one get an opportunity like that? Well, um, for me, I, like I said, played with a cover band for several years and I am from the a town called Victoria, Texas. And um, Dustin Schaefer, one of the former guitar players is also from that town. And okay. he and I, at one point in time, when he released, let's say it was his first album, uh, he was doing some shows, and we connected. He needed a second guitar player, and we just, you know, kind of clicked as music buddies. And fast forward a little bit, we played several shows together, and you know, just remained friends. And then one day, when the motor cars were looking for a new guy, he put my name in the hat, and I did everything I could to to follow up on my end, and they picked me. <laughs> That's awesome. So how did you get your start in music? Um, that's funny because someone just asked me that yesterday and I hadn't, th hadn't thought about it for a long time. Somebody's like, 
man, everyone's got their, their own little story on how they picked up the first instrument or played guitar. And for me, it was kind of cool because uh, I was on a, a field trip in middle school. I was in the sixth grade and I was listening to uh, Nirvana's live unplugged album and the song Lake of Fire was on my on repeat on my Walkman CD player. And uh, this is back in 2002. And I was just sitting there and I remember hearing a certain lick on the song. And I was just like, man, that's so cool. I want to learn how to do that. And so that next week when I got home, I told her mom, hey, I want to learn to play guitar. And she she told me, I'm not going to get you something that's going to sit in the corner of your room and collect dust. <laughs> exactly. I think we, I think when, uh, you know, that's something that we all, that happens to all of us. Because I remember asking for my first guitar. Because, I mean, I've got a music background. I mean, I was always a front man and everything. And I'm a half-assed guitarist. <laughs> Even to this day, my son, you know, has outshined me completely in that aspect. Which, that's good. That's what you want your kids to do. You want your kids oh, to be I better than you. But uh, I remember getting my first guitar. And, you know, they were like, my folks were like, you know, either either you're going to love this or we're going to have worry about how you're ever going to make a living. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, well, you know, I'm like, well, how, how about a, how about we do a mixture of both? Yeah. <laughs> so what was your, uh, what was your first guitar? Do you remember? I actually, it's, that's kind of a hard question for me because it, the first guitar I think I ever touched was an old like Hondo Strat copy uh -huh. that a family friend just let us borrow for a little bit. And that I didn't have very long because we ended up giving it back. But then someone else gave us a guitar that was literally a piece of wood and strings. I still have it. It's it's back in my mother's house. It's, it's sitting in the closet. And I was I need to restore it or do something with it because it is it is an ugly, just black wood piece of body. <laughs> and yeah. You could see where like the cavity where all the electronics would go, and it's there's nothing in it. There never has been actually. And it the the bridge is just you know some crummy piece of wood and that's that's what i wore <laughs> oh yeah it's all it's it's ugly i wish i had a picture of it so i could show you that but, is awesome um, i you know eventually i i uh i got a bc rich warlock and played on that for a long time and, hell yes. and I went, yeah and then i went through the steve Vai phase and that's all i listened to so i got a, an ibanez and um man now i'm, I'm like strictly gnl that's that's really all i touch for the most part now i hear you Going back to the uh, the Warlock, that's the first guitar I bought. My my first my son's first real guitar was a Carrie yeah. King Special Edition <laughs> Warlock. Heck yeah! And uh, they're they're great guitars. They're, they really they're, are, they're, especially you know, know <laughs> if you if you're gonna play metal, you really need yeah. that. Because I mean, I handed it to him with Black Diamond heavies on there, and he was just like in awe. He goes, "Ooh, drop D for life." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I honestly don't even know what ever happened to that guitar. I, I guess I either traded it or sold it a long time because I have no idea where it is. Well, that happens. That happens. Yeah. Well, and you you actually answered one of I you know I always do this um, kind of a not not a quick fire, but what I call um, the bare bones questions. And you know your favorite instrument that you play now, so you've already answered that one for us. So that's pretty good. <laughs> about the Janelle, what, what kind yeah. of, uh, what other equipment do you use? Amps um, and everything well, was. Whenever, uh, we're back home and, you know, I've got my, my normal rig. I, I, I have a Gino blues boy that, uh, it's, I bought it from a guy. It was a custom shop guitar that he just had sitting around and it was everything I wanted. It's, um, uh, just a sunburst. No, I'm sorry. Not a sunburst. It's like a dark burst finish. Um, and I personally love P nineties in the neck. So I've yeah. got a P 90 in my neck. And then I've got a um, Seymour Duncan Little 59 in my bridge. So I can get a lot of the the spanky telly tone of qualities I need out of it. But with that, hum, that little humbucker, I can still push it and get kind of a hard drive for pretty much anything. It's a very versatile guitar. And um, through that, I run through my pedal board. Uh, most of what I use is uh, with old school effects. And that's uh, he's a guy that's out of my hometown, builds just old school straight circuit antique uh boutique pedals and I've that's heard, i've heard good. i've heard of them um yeah i can't in our uh maybe i saw an article at one point 
because it's like going back to the analog stuff where yes. you're getting that yeah. true sound that everybody has tried to duplicate, but you know, they're bringing it back, but a more compact because you've got better supplies and circuits and everything nowadays. But yeah, as Sam, Sam with them, he's, he's, man, he's, he's something else, you know, cause with, with his pedals, I have one that he built. That's pretty cool. It's not in production yet. And he's working on, and I've been using it for a while and it is one of the greatest drive pedals I think I've ever used. And um doesn't have a name yet that I know of, but I think once it gets out there, it's going to be one of those ones like, man, because I, I have people every once in a while, gearheads come up, hey, what is that pedal you use for this and that? I was like, actually, it's this, and it's pretty cool. And I just have a picture of a pineapple on it right now. <laughs> just nice. in a, a plain box with a <laughs> got no name and all that. He might need but, to uh, name it after you, so since you're uh, out there playing it and pretty much being the, the road guy for it. Yeah. <laughs> It's it the, might not sell much if it's named after me. You can call it the, the uh, PT Pineapple uh, Yeah, there you go. Pedal. That's a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, for, through that, after my pedal board, um, I use a, uh, a Dr. Z Stangray right now. Um, and that was a, it was a gift from a family friend. And um, I had always just loved that amp. And we, he let me, we played in a band together, and he had it, and I used it for several years. And, uh, he was just like, man, you know what? I don't use that amp, so I'll just take it on the road with you. And it's been a big part of my rig for a good long while. So it's it's clean, clean amp, and I love it. <laughs> nice. Who were some of the favorite bands that you got that you've had the opportunity to play with since joining the band? To make that simple, the most for me, there's a couple that stick out. One of them is uh, definitely Mike and the Moon Pies. Those guys, if you haven't checked them out, oh, I yeah. tell everyone you need to. Those guys are something else. They're just check them out, Mike and the Moon Pies. And of course, you know, the brass tacks. Those guys, I, I will never forget Twin Falls Western days, you know, hearing those guys rock out and uh, Eli Lock with the brass tacks likes yeah. to incorporate the, the Star Spangled Banner. And, you know, those. Yeah, those dudes are definitely see a couple of my favorite rocking ones. Man, I could I could go on all day about that because everyone everyone has their qualities. And, oh uh, yeah, when you yeah, a Jeff Jeff Crosby band is another one. I actually got to sit in with him once a couple of months ago uh, for a festival they did, and it was those guys are also something else, man. When I guess you guys you play a lot with Reckless Kelly too, because with the all the brothers being, you know in multiple bands and yeah. everything else. I mean, I know you guys have done shows together. Um, actually Gordy Schroeder brought that up, uh, did an interview with him, uh, about a week or two ago, <clears throat> but you brought up Eli. Eli told me a story one time. He goes, Pablo does the best karaoke version of purple rain <laughs> that there ever was complete with sound effects. I, he said, he said it was at the red line in he, I've got to hear this story. So it's funny because that night, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I remember a big chunk of it. And then later on, I don't remember so much of it, <laughs> right. but I had several people tell me the next day, man, that was such a good time. It was, um, so we, we were played that show at twin fall Western days and I was staying at the red line and they have this, this bar, that's on the side. I can't remember what it's called exactly, but there's a guy there doing karaoke and we're over there. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing. And so about purple rain to go back into that specifically, I've been singing that song for a long time. Um, and the country cover band that I used to play with called the legal limit band, it was kind of a one-off that was very different from what the rest of our set list was, mm -hmm. but people loved it and they danced to it. And the sound effects thing he's talking about. Uh, so I never meant to cause you any sorrow whenever he sings that part. Yeah. In the original tune. So when I did that, if, even when I played it with the band, I would say sorrow and I would create my own delay. Sorrow, sorrow, sorrow. That's awesome. <laughs> Coming back from the mic. And it was just something I always did because, you know, I, I wasn't going to mess around with carrying around vocal effects. Or <laughs> yeah, right. But, yeah, I, I signed. I, I keep in mind this was maybe six or seven months being in the motor cars. That was one of my. I think it was like my second trip to Idaho, so I didn't know anyone really. I was still making friends and getting to know people, and 
I don't know if you can tell. I'm not. I'm not shy. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> I make friends but everywhere. The, the karaoke list was up, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. And um, you know, Eli, all the guys were there hanging out. Some of the the rest of the guys in the motor cars were there, and um, yeah, I signed up for it. And I just remember it was it was it was awesome because the guy he had the right. Sometimes you get a karaoke track, and the back track's not the best. Real. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. I, yeah what is it? Like, uh. This, is it what is it? Sound choice is about the best one because it's the only one that really has the right tempos and everything yeah. else in it. And then you get someone, some knockoff, and you're like, "What the hell is this? This isn't even the yeah. same song." Well, the <laughs> karaoke, like a MIDI, a yeah, MIDI backing track or something, yeah, <laughs> that you know, or some really bad like a uh, church backing track, yes, that you'll get yes. in in some of those. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh man! But, yeah, uh, I I got up there and did it, and um, you know, I re- no one, I guess, knew either that I sang because I don't sing much. I don't sing at all with the motor cars. Okay, but and I hadn't been, you know, because I've just been focusing on my guitar playing. So when I got up there, I guess some of them were like, "Oh, that dude sings too," and it's like, I mean, I try. <laughs> I would never <laughs> right say on. I'm a singer, but but uh, you know, I do my best, and yeah, I mean, I just it, it was it was cool because I. I, I think even at the beginning, if I remember correctly, I even said, uh, dude, beloved, we're gathered here today to get through this thing called, called life. <laughs> Just as kind of a joke. And, That's yeah, awesome. man, it was, it was, it was fun. It was a good time. So the, that, that will forever live on at the red lion. <laughs> well, I could, I could only imagine what the, uh, the karaoke DJ guys thinking where he's got, you know, these two bands that, you know, people have actually heard of are coming in and getting on his, you know, and the guys are getting on stage singing and do, doing karaoke. I couldn't imagine what this guy's face or a reaction was because he's oh, got to be like, holy crap, this is, um, you know, this is just karaoke, right? You guys are too good for this. <laughs> well, and then, and then, you know, Anytime you go, I, I personally, I love doing karaoke. I think you don't even have to get me drunk to do karaoke. Oh, <laughs> like me most, either. Most people say, yeah, I, I love it. But it was funny because there were some people there that I guess were the regulars that, you know, did did their uh, their 70s and 80s country tunes and karaoke, and they were having a good time. And then you had all this all this rowdy band kids, you know, and they're just making noise and doing some other stuff. And then the... Uh, the other thing was, I don't know, I don't remember if anyone actually did it or not, but we kept talking about cool key changes in songs. And um, so me and Eli and, and Dave and all them, we were just, you know, going back and forth. And I was like, guys, I'm going to let y'all finish, but the thong song has the best key change ever. <laughs> 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 and that's been kind of an ongoing joke between us. So like in, anytime we hear it, we of course like send a snap or a video of each other. Like there's that key change. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. And that's, and see, that's what's great about being around so many of these different guys that are, you know, a little more outgoing than, than some of these others. Cause I mean, I know I've, I've been fortunate enough over the years to meet a lot of guys from, you know, different genres and, everything else and some guys are so reserved to talk to it's just like hey you know this is just normal conversation and then you get guys yeah. like like you and like eli and everybody and it's just like oh man we're just having a conversation this is great oh yeah <clears throat> i'm trying i just well i did kind of just jump off my own train of thought um <laughs> now you guys are at mile zero too right We'll be, uh, yes, we finish up here in Boise and then we go to Steamboat. Uh, we'll be there for the week. And we got a few Texas dates uh, in January and then we go to Mile Zero at the end of January. See, that's, I was hoping to try to go this year, but I think next year is going to be an absolute have to. So It's a good time. Uh, it, it, that's it, what, it really is. That's what I've heard. I mean, I've got, I mean, I've got a bunch of my musician friends here. They're all like, well, you're going, right? And I'm like, no, not this year. And they're like, well, you got to go next year. I even reached out about press passes. And they were like, oh, yeah, this is how you did it. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm just, this thing's not even a year old yet. And I'm just like, okay, I'm kind of overwhelmed because yeah. the response and the, you know, the caliber of, of, of folks that I've been able to talk to, 
Um, I, I really can't. I mean, I can't complain. And that's why I need to make myself available to go next year because oh, yeah. that's just. You won't regret it. I, I promise you. There are so it's, many. It's a great time. Oh, and, yeah. and, you know, that's that, you know, everybody has said that. And then here yeah. I am going, you know, I'm heading out to Oregon this spring. <laughs> and then Eli's like, okay, you're going to come hang out with me. And then we're going to show you around. I'm like, right on, right on, right on. And now you guys play the Highway 30 fe uh, Festival for Gordy. We, we, I, I'm not sure that the one we did was Highway 30 because it was before the actual Highway 30. I think it was called Western Days. Yeah. Because I got... I, I, I got it mixed up and I kept calling it highway 30, but I think I want to say it was pre highway 30. Like before that it moved. Still, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we did that one. Um, and man, twin falls, Idaho is, is a cool town. That's where all the, that's where the red lion is. That's where that festival happened. Okay. I was actually just there yesterday before I, uh, I'm in Boise right now. And we, uh, if you're ever there, there's a breakfast spot called abracadabra, which is, unbelievably good <laughs> but yeah man it's a cool town and everyone there that, that was at that festival was was really receptive i mean everyone there loves live music they love you know the the music scene that's coming up from texas you know you got the the guys coming down from washington and oregon and that and it's just it's cool to see that this 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 love and spread for americana music you know yeah. in a different part of the country rather than, than just back home in texas you know it's 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 really cool to see the reception of that <laughs> Let's talk about red dirt because right. I know, and this is a conversation that, that I actually ended up having with some guys that, um, some friends of mine here that they play in Texas and everywhere else. And they, they kind of play all over the place, but it seems like all you have to do is say, Hey, I'm from Texas and I play red dirt country and people are going to let you in a door. <laughs> almost and and that's kind of some of the perception that some of these guys that have been trying to you know at least get listened to they think that you can't have that same sound if you're not from that specific area code if you will you know if you're not yeah. texas you can't play anything that sounds like texas or and i know then like everybody's hitting that stamp for you know americana which is you know, that's kind of become the catch all. But what what are your thoughts on some of that? Well, it's it's funny because I'm I'm reading a book about it. It's just called it's called Americana Music, and it, it kind of hits that the that label itself and talks about um, at least in, in the writer's perspective that, and I agree with this that that genre of music is such a broad broad statement that. I wouldn't say, and this is just my opinion personally, I don't care what state you come from. If you want to play some music that talks about, you know, where you're from and just living your life, whether it's about, you know, hanging out, being with your friends, the people, you know, from your, from your hometown or, you know, getting your heart broke, of course, you know, Absolutely. You can call it whatever you want at the end of the day. And this, like I said, this is just my opinion. If it, if it touches someone or it means something to someone else, then that's music just exactly. in general. And then to me, that that's all that matters. I don't care what you want to label it, call it red dirt, Americana. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you're doing, if you're going out there and you're playing wild hair or the uh, music fest or mile zero, and these people that are coming to see us are being, you know, moved by that music or it means something to them. then I mean, it doesn't matter what it's called. You know, exactly. it's, it's music, you know, we'll see it. My, my intro is changing up for the new year and you're, you're actually going to be, you know, second, episode in for the new year when you listen i've actually written a whole new thing about where everybody wants to put a label on music they want to put a yeah. label they want to call it america you know everybody think everything needs to fit in a box or have a label or have this you know they want to call it americana they want to call it red dirt they want to call it you know outlaw but at the end of the day it's american music right and it comes from everywhere. I mean, it comes from, you know, hills of Kentucky. It comes from, you know, and it's working man. It's working man's music. It's guys yeah. that, that are showing up at a show, spent buying a $2 beer. They've got calloused hands and probably some dirt still on their shoes and boots or in their jeans. And I think that's, 
I think we don't we we need to get away from everybody feeling like they got to put a stamp of, on something, right? For acceptance, right. <clears throat> because I mean, there right now there's a push where over here on the East Coast that you know it's it's Carolina red clay, you know that's where <laughs> all these guys are coming from. Because I don't know if you've ever had the experience of getting in red clay, that shit never comes off. <laughs> I mean, it never it does not wash out of your clothes. It stains your hands, and you know that's just part of life. Yeah, and you know that's why I always like to get different people's perspectives on music. Yeah, and and that that's it's it's that's kind of a, a cool comparison there. You know, the, when we talk about you know just music in general, whether it's it can be moving or or you know therapeutic for some folks. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's the kind of stuff that gets that red clay or red dirt out is, you know, just good music, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and I mean, we do this for the people that listen to us, you know, at the end of the day. And that's what it's, at least to me, that's what it's about is the people who, uh, want to hear what we're putting out. And, the, and that's, and that's important. And because, and that's, that's one of those, like I said, that's one of those things that everybody talks about it doesn't matter what genre it is. If it moves you, you know, music should, should make you feel something. It's kind of like poetry and writing. Yeah. Whatever you're, if you're reading it or you're listening to it, because I mean, songwriting is poetry. And I mean, it's telling a story. It needs to, I, I mean, in, in, I'm married to a poet, so I get this drilled into my head, but you know, it should really, it should make you either, it should either make you sad, happy, piss you off, or make you question everything. And I think you guys do a great job of that with the songwriting and storytelling. But and there's so much that people are really getting back to that storytelling aspect. At least that are not the pop country, you know, just Nashville cookie cutters. Yeah. <clears throat> And see, I want to see, I didn't even go into pop country with you and I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <clears throat> that's, you know, that's kind of like you don't talk religion or politics in a bar. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you don't talk pop country with a red dirt guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh got, my goodness. Got... <laughs> we won't go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's why, you know, it's like, it is the old bar standard. Yeah. Well, here, we will jump into some bare bones. Now, we've already covered what your favorite guitar was. What band are you into right now that's not you guys? Um, Man, I'm kind of uh, one of those guys who's, I guess, likes to listen to my friends, if that says anything. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned the Moon Pies. I mentioned Jeff Crosby. Uh, there's another group that uh, is out of the Houston area. They're called the Chad Cook Band, and I've been I've been listening to them quite a bit here recently. Um, I actually got to work with them several years ago, and um, they're they're all good dudes, good friends of mine. But man, they've been putting out some good stuff recently. Um, I think their latest single is called "Life Behind Bars," and it talks about being a musician and you know playing at bars doing the whole grind of being a musician and um you know that's that's been what i've been listening to i've been listening to some marcus king band you know those guys he's from here where i live is he really absolutely yeah and uh yeah i mean that and i actually i listen to a lot of electronic music believe it or not (laughs) are you Um, an edm guy a closet edm uh, guy not necessarily edm more of like ambient atmospheric especially with like pedal steel playing Um, yeah Will Will Van Horn, uh, Robert Ellis's steel player, I love that guy's stuff. So he's got that album called Pedal Steel Guitar, and that is like my go-to for if I'm reading, if I'm on a plane, if I'm just closing my eyes, relaxing. That it's an instrumental album with pedal steel, bass, and drums. And that man, that thing as a steel player, especially, it's good. But anyone who gives it listens it won't be disappointed. I promise you. <laughs> I will have to check that out. Yeah, it's good. Okay, what is your all-time favorite book? <laughs> oh, man, that's a hard one. Um, I would say growing up, the book that I had read the most was Shiloh. I don't know if you remember that one. I do. About, about the dog. And uh, 
you know, I'm a dog lover. I have two dogs myself. So I'd say as a kid, that would probably be my the first one that comes to mind. And I don't read as much as I, I wish I, I should. I, I've started several books and not finished them because I have a hard time paying attention to that. Yeah. Well, you're, <laughs> you've got a lot of things going on around you. Yeah. And right now I am, I'm, I, I just started reading this uh, book about Americana music and just talks about the, uh, you know, the roots of it all and some of the founders of it and how it all got started. So I'll get back to you on that one. Cause that, okay. that might, <laughs> Hey, I'm all for it. All right. As, as you're, you're going to probably say this is sacrilege, but I have to ask this one. Pulled pork or brisket, dry rub or sauced? Why not both? My man. <laughs> See, that's that's the correct answer every time. Yeah. Both for the Heck win. Yeah. <laughs> dry rub or sauce, though? You know, me personally, I, I like dry rubs. Me um, too. I, I like, you know, I actually, I just, I, I'm a hunter as well. And uh, just last week, you know, I went and I went hunting, got a deer, and I, I've, put a roast i put some dry uh, spices on it and vacuum packed it and when i get home i'm going to sous vide it cook it up and see how it turns out Man. so uh i i i would say for me personally i'm a dry rub guy okay you're making me hungry too <laughs> okay what was the first record you ever got for yourself or you picked out and somebody bought for you that you made the conscious decision to go that's what i want this is going to be surprising to you, I think, because it's kind of funny. And I tell people this and they give me a hard time. I'm like, really? But one of the first, the one that, the first one that I can remember I ever got was Offspring Americana, the Offspring Americana. Yeah. And that had Pretty Fly for a White Guy on it. Oh, yeah. It's a great album. Man, Oh yeah. And, and as a young guitar player, when that was coming out, you know, I wanted to learn all that stuff and that, the, that album, because I just sat there and I remember being a kid just sitting there playing guitar along with it, you know, really taught me a lot. You know, there's some good guitar. So if you haven't listened to it, there's a lot of good guitars playing on that album. There really yeah. is. Okay. What was the first concert you remember going to? Um, so there was a guy who would come to the local uh, college and put on these, uh, these like piano performances and I can't remember his name. He was just one of those like Yanni S <laughs> style guys. It just like did, you know, of course like movie themes and all that. And when I was a kid, uh, my mom, she took me to that stuff. And I just remember being in awe watching this guy play keyboards and, you know, make all these cool sounds. And he, of course, you know, he would do the star Wars theme. He'd do, you know, Indiana Jones, all that good stuff. And uh, that for me was some of my first experiences, you know, going to concerts. But what's even cooler than that is 10 years later, when I was uh, in the college jazz group, I played on that same stage. And my mom told me that I had said to her when I was a kid, one day I'm going to do that. And hell, sure enough, I did. <laughs> That's awesome. And you actually opened up a good transition into the next one Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars, definitely. Good yeah. answer. That, and it's not, but but I do want to say this: it's not because I think it's better. It's just because, for me, you know, my generation, I didn't really grow up on Star Trek. I never never watched it. wasn't really exposed to it. Yeah. So, and I, I I'm not gonna say I never will check it out, but I just never did. <laughs> the movies are great. I'm I'm a lifelong Star Wars guy. I don't know if you can even see. I've even got my Kylo Ren helmet behind me here. <laughs> Um, let's see. What is your jam song? What's that one song? It doesn't matter if you've heard this song a thousand times. You're in the car. It comes across the playlist or anything. That volume's going up. You know you're going to roll the window down and the foot's going down on the pedal a little bit faster. What is... Doc what, go ahead. Hit me with it. Dr. Funk by The Main Squeeze. I don't know <laughs> that one. I'm going to have to check that one out. That one comes on. And that, I've got a I've got a big playlist on Spotify that's got a, a just. It's called. It's it's spelled U N H exclamation point, and it stands for uh. So that when you hear those songs, it makes you go like uh. That's a jam. And then I have another one that's got like Latin music that does the same thing, and I call it L uh. And it's just <laughs> you know songs that kind of do that for you. That kind of make you feel like yeah, this is a jam. So every once in a while, I hear something that gives me that that feeling that you get from a certain song, I'll put it on that playlist. But that one, that's, that's, that's a jam for me right there. Have you made them public? <laughs> What's that? Have you, have you made your playlist public so people can listen? Oh yeah. 
That's yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, I like it. Okay, person living or dead that you wish you could take the stage with? Man, I would say I would want to play with John Mayer living. And the reason is because there was a long period of time where I, I studied, I don't want to say study, but I, I learned a lot of his, uh, his trio stuff that he did. And that uh, was one of those things, you know, I remember a certain point to hit a wall with guitar playing and then you hear something like, oh, I want to learn to do what he's doing, you know, or kind of analyze what he's playing. And that guy is just a, you know, he's just a faucet of genres that he's done like so much, you know, as with doing the Grateful Dead stuff, doing his trio stuff and his pop stuff, man. I, I have a lot of respect for that dude as a guitar player and a musician. And I told someone one day, I'd love to play steel with that guy on some of his tunes. <laughs> you never know. You, you're probably going to end up with that chance. <laughs> okay. Do you have a life's mantra or, you know, just that one little phrase that, that you always keep in the forefront of your mind that to try to help guide you? I, I do, and it's just me being the, the BSer that I am. I always tell people, and I I'm just one day said this, um, I'll tell people, you know what they say, and they'll be like, what do they say, Pablo? And I'll say, you can't keep many peaches in the pantry if you don't have any figs in the freezer. And somebody <laughs> said to me, <laughs> somebody said to me, what does that even mean? And I'm like, to be honest with you, I don't think it means anything, but I guess it kind of means, you know, if you have peaches in the pantry, you don't need to worry about them. If you got your figs in the freezer, you know, you got your short term good times, you got your long term good times. I don't know. Take take it for what you will. But that's <laughs> but it sounds like old school sage advice. Like it you, does. you'd hear some old cowboy come up and go, "Well, you know, boys, it's like they always say." Yeah, yeah. I love and that's, it. That's that's mine, and it's it's funny because uh, I say that all the time to people, and I'll, I'll usually get those like. What? what did he just say? He's like, well, that kind of makes sense. Or, or the, the, some of the folks would be like, they're like, Oh, I get it. I get it. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. I, You're I full of it. shit. <laughs> Cause I don't even know what the hell it means. <laughs> My best friend's got a new one. Now, um, we were at a uh, venue the other night and I was going to go live cause I'm helping. It's a br farm and brewery that they can make most of their beers from what they grow on the farm. And we were out there for a chili cook-off, and he was going to film. He was my best friend was going to film for me, doing me, doing a little live thing with the musician that's playing, who's a buddy of ours and everything. He gets none of it. And I've got a friend that actually is a videographer for ESPN. So my buddy just goes out of nowhere. He goes, well, I don't work for ESPN. That's why it screwed up. And that's his go-to now. I'll get a random text. It's not like I work for ESPN or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, that's so random. But if you have, if in, in certain context, I guess it's going to fly with everything. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Besides yourself. And this kind of goes in with some of the other questions. Who should somebody be checking out? Is there a, Say that again? Besides yourself, who musically should people be checking out right now? I mean, I know we've kind of talked about a few, but is there is there somebody that you think is not maybe getting all that full blown? Hey, these guys are so underrated, and people don't realize how good they are yet. And I would I would say the first you know group to come to mind would be Chad Cook and them. Those guys, like I've. I've I can say, I can tell you, honestly, I've watched the grind they've done. Cause like I said, I, I worked with them back in like 2009, 2010, you know, we, we, I played with them and, um, I haven't for a long, long time, but, and I don't get to see him anymore, but I still, you know, follow them. those guys. Chad Cook band is, is awesome. And they've, uh, they've got some great music, but a lot of back catalog that I don't think, even think he's recorded yet that, I could definitely see them being one of those bands that can uh, break through to that next level for sure. All right. This was the one that always trips everybody up. If you had a spirit animal, what would it be? A Pomeranian. <laughs> you had no hesitation whatsoever, <laughs> sir. You are and, a God among men. 
And let me tell you why. Uh, right. I have a Pomeranian. I've had him since the day he was born. He was uh, He's the son of one of my mom's dogs, and he is – he, he's my little homie you know he's just he's a cool his name's Oso, and anyone who's ever met him just loves him and, and he's just he's me you know i raised him since he was born and he, we're just we're a lot alike it's kind of funny to be honest with that's you. awesome <laughs> that is awesome all right well we're in the point of the show do you have any shout outs you want to give to anybody um you know just I actually I'd just like to say you know thank you for having me I appreciate this is a lot of fun and uh you know look forward to see what we're uh what 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 we get to do is with the motor cars and you know how the new album goes so definitely check us out if you guys, guys get a chance and uh you know just thank you to everyone who's you know kind of been alongside us along the way and you know hopefully we got a, a lot of cool things in store for us in 2020 right on all right folks thanks for checking in thanks for listening Thank you, Pablo, for coming on the show. Guys, we will catch you next week.